Can you pin me, Ivana? Are we ready? Ready to go. Give me one, two, three, four. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Word is Working for Me broadcast. I can see people already logging on. Good morning, good morning. God bless all of you, wherever you're viewing from. I like to say that it's, it's very exciting to know that people are viewing around the world. And um, uh, I, I lately discovered that the Word is Working for Me broadcast has thousands of people who are following uh, even remotely, if if I must say so, but they're watching. And so sometimes you don't know the effect that you have until you see, you see the stats. And so I was privileged to see the stats last week and I was pleasantly surprised. And I thank God for that because you want to know that what you're doing sometimes, that it's reaching, that it's, 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 it's going somewhere, that it's, it's touching lives and it's uh, making a difference. And so uh, to all of you watching, God bless you and thank you for uh, joining. Thank you for coming on every day. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. It really, really encourages us and it lets us know where you are and how you feel about the broadcast. Good morning. Uh, I can't see as many people as I would like to, but nevertheless, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we have Apostle Colin S. Boom in the room this morning. And I know I was watching the comments yesterday and everybody was saying, we are waiting for you. We are, we are, we are ready for you. We are, we are uh, expecting something good. <laughs> and so uh, I know that he always comes ready with the word of God, not just to preach the word of God, but to bring a word, a now time word, a Rima word to us that can uh, bless our lives and, and put us in a better place when it's all over. So we give God praise and thanks for him this morning. And I just want to hand it over to him. Uh, thank you for joining Apostle. Over to you. It is a thrill for me to be on with you today. It is a joy to be able to share. The scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The word is working for us. Now today, I'm going to be reading from the book of Genesis, the seventh chapter, uh, chapter seven, verses one, two, and three. And then I'm going to be reading Genesis chapter eight and verse number 21 and 22. Genesis 7, 1 and 2, every time I quote this scripture, I get into trouble because the general consensus of the Christian world is that God told Noah to take the animals in by twos, by pairs. And I told them, I beg to differ. They, they look at each other, they look at me like, who is this idiot? But then I read my scripture, Genesis chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord said unto Noah, come thou and thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by, what's that word there? By seven. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not there yet. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven. And the male and his female. And of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and the female. So unclean beasts were taken into the ark by pairs. Clean animals, however, were taken into the ark by sevens. Now I'm reading Genesis 8 verses 21 and 22, and it explains why. God needed him to bring sevens and pairs. So here we go. 
Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every thing living as I have done. But while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. So that means climate change is not going to make it cease. A. And nuclear bombs is not going to make it cease. Neither of the two scenarios which are being uh, talked about in our day and time that brings a lot of fear to people, none mm -hmm. of those scenarios are going to happen. Why? The Bible says so. So God smells this sweet savor. I'm getting into my message now. Yeah. And he says, let me go down and see what they're doing there. They're, they, they were giving God a sacrifice. Noah had built an altar and was giving a sacrifice. Where did he get the sacrifice from? From the seven clean animals that were taken into the ark, everyone by their sevens, because he knew that when they were done with the flood and they came out on dry ground, they would have to make a sacrifice unto God. And if the animals went in by pairs, then whatever animal they used, that animal would become extinct. And so God telling him to bring by the sevens, the clean animals, was his provision for making sure that the animals that were sacrificed, there would be a continuity of that yeah. particular species. God did not want any species to become extinct. But you know what we have done about that. We have All done right. a good number on that, but God had nothing to do with that. So God expected that when all of the the flood and the dying was over that the man Noah would bring a sacrifice to the Lord. And then he gives the command, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, cool and heat shall not cease. It shall be perpetual as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. This earth, this kingdom that we are in is a seed kingdom. This kingdom that we're in is a sowing and reaping kingdom. This kingdom that we're in is a seed time, A, and a harvest time kingdom, B. And I'm beginning my message now. Number one, hours of prayer, hours of prayer accompanied by fasting cannot do what the seed can do. Hours of prayer accompanied by fasting. I'm going to make a statement now that may sound counterproductive, but I'm going to make it anyhow. Money and seed does not work in the prayer equation and prayer does not work in the seed and harvest equation. Simply put, a farmer can have great seed and great soil. And he can pray great prayers with regard to the seed. But it will never produce a crop. Prayer does not work in the farming equation. There are principles that work in that uh, genre, I'd say. And prayer is not one of them. If prayer worked in the blessing and harvest equation, Nigerians would be very wealthy because I've been to Nigeria and I've heard them and seen them pray. And boy, they, they kind of embarrass you. Like, what is my, my prayer is just a, a, a little spit compared to this ocean of power that flows out of these people as they go back and forth and shake their head. I thought their heads would come off of their body they, with the violence that they shake and pray. But prayer does not work in the harvest equation. Prayer does not work in the seed equation. No matter how powerful the seed is, and no matter how productive the soil is, praying about the harvest will not make it happen. The farmer has got to sow that seed in that good ground. 
Are you feeling me now? Amen. Let me make my second point. Your financial miracle and abundance is in the seed, not in the prayer, not in the ukumana shandai, kick him on the sin. You can speak in tongues until the cows come home. Your financial harvest, that harvest of abundance, is in your seed. So when you have seed in your hand, you also have, at the same time, the determination of the harvest in your hand. Yeah. You are the deciding factor as it regards your harvest. What are you talking about, Rev? Come on, man. That's in God's hand. No. Harvest is never in God's hand. He gives us the option. He says, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. The kingdom mm -hmm. is a seed kingdom. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Your miracle of abundance is in your seed and your seed is in your capable hands. So what you have got to do, what I have got to do, is get it out of our hands and get it in the soil so that it can produce. Thankfully, winter is almost done over here. We had snow yesterday, but winter is almost done. And uh, the wife has already told me this year, she's going to get more seed in the ground because she wants a bigger harvest. We were cooking some of the stuff because she would take it, uh, freeze, freeze it, and yeah. put it in, in the freezer there. And then when we were ready to cook the stuff, then she would take it out. Yeah. And it was, it was fresh and the, 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 uh, the seasonings, oh my goodness. You can taste the difference Definitely. in the homegrown seasoning as opposed to the ones that you buy in the store. Mm -hmm. She's readying herself for that other harvest. And she's already told me, we're going to get more this year than ever. And I agree. I just help along. I just buy the seeds and every now and then something to be lifted, something that's too heavy. I would do that part. But she's the one. She's got green hands, green thumbs. The that's God right. the glory. The seed will produce and maintain your life. The seed that's in your hand, when you treat it properly, it will produce and it will maintain your life. Produce a and maintain, mm -hmm. sustain. All through the winter, we were taking packages that we had freezed and all through the winter, we were cooking that stuff. Mm -hmm. Happily so too, because now we don't have to spend that money to buy from the store stuff that is, uh, you know, GMO produce and all the rest of it. We That's know right. our stuff is natural. Mm -hmm. A seed can handle anything. So number one is hours of prayer can't do what seed can do. Number two is your financial miracle of abundance is in your seed. Number three is the kingdom is a seed kingdom. Number four is the seed will produce and maintain your financial life. It will produce your financial life. It will maintain your financial life. Number five is a seed can handle anything. And it brings financial dilemmas to an end. Look at the incident when the crowd was hungry. And the boy came to Jesus and handed him five loaves and two fishes. Now, what can that do? It could be what it was in the boy's hand. But the moment it got into the hands of Jesus, the power of multiplication kicked in as he raised it up to God and told the disciples, put the people in companies of 50. Now, notice, even though a miracle was about to happen, organization was in place first before the miracle. He organized the people in companies of 50 and then broke the fish and bread and handed it to his disciples. My point is, a seed can handle anything. At the time when Jesus multiplied the fish and bread, it brought the dilemma of hunger, the hungry crowd, it brought it to an end. A seed can bring your dilemmas to an end. Mm -hmm. You know what I, when I first started off preaching, the first thing I learned about tithing was, the preacher said to me, he said, Rev, tithing is step one to financial independence. And he walked away, he said, no, 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 don't walk away. 
Uh, hold a minute there. You just drop. You can't just drop a bomb and, and walk away. I am the boom, not you. Tell me what you mean when you said tithing <laughs> is step one. And he said, think about it. If you don't make step one, you can't make step two, can you? I said, no. And he walked off again. I didn't need him after that. I figured it out for myself after that. Step one to financial independence is tithing. So if you're not a tither, you will never be financially independent, ever. You will beat your head against the rock. You will pray. You will fast. You will hook him on a shandai. You will kick him on the shin. You will bind. You will loose. You will decree and declare uh, through the power until your throat gets tired. And nothing is going to change. But today, today, we're going to change some things and we're going to shift some things because I'm going to be uh, biblically clear as possible so that we can move out from the stuck place that we may have found ourselves in. Are you feeling a brother now? Amen. Glory to God. Say with me, my broke days are over and all of my seed blockers are removed today. My broke days are over and all of my seed blockers are removed from my life today. Let no one block your seed because if they block your seed, they can block your harvest. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me go a little deeper. Number one, number two. Many people have asked me, they said, you know, Rev, this tithing thing. And the minute they say that, I know that there's a disrespect for a system that God has set up to be a blessing to them. This tithing thing, they call it a thing. And I tell them, you, you got to check that language right off the bat. That language tells me that you're full of suspicion and that you have very little uh, biblical regard. You don't regard the thing with the same uh, aura of reverence that the Bible demands. You call it a thing. The next thing is, I meet people that say, Let, it's time for us to throw our tithes and offers. Oh, oh, hold a minute, hold a minute. We're not throwing anything. We are bringing it to God. We are giving it to God. The language betrays the heart of the matter. And if you listen carefully to what people are saying <clears throat> at the time when it's time to give to God, you can tell where their heart is. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when somebody says this tithing thing, you got to stop them right off the bat there because you know whatever it is they're about to give, it will not make a difference. Their heart is in the wrong place. And then for those that say, I, I throw my, my offering, or worse yet, I throw my collection. <laughs> <laughs> and collection reminds you of the days when little kids used to uh, walk to church with a little penny to give to the Lord's cause because mom or dad had given that to them. Anyhow, they, uh, the question that is asked is, I am a tither. Why is it that I still have this, uh, this season of insufficiency and lack? I'm tithing, but nothing is shifting, Rev. Come on, don't lie to me. And number one, I'm not a liar here. Number two, you've got to know your scripture. And number three, you need to find some level of balance after you have tithed. So let me walk you through this. In the book of Malachi, the book says, you have robbed me. The question is how? God tells them how in tithes and offerings. Hold a minute. Offerings? Yes. The tithe. What it does, it documents your faithfulness to God because it is a command. You don't decide whether or not you will do it. It is a command. It is imperative that you do it. It is necessary that you do it. God demands it. God requires it. Whether your church believes in it or not has nothing to do with anything. God demands it. Bring ye all the tithes. So he says, you're robbing me in tithes. So the tithe documents your faithfulness to the command that God gave. Learn this from me and learn it well. The tithe is never optional. You don't decide whether or not you're going to do it. It's just done. All right, now when that is done, you have documented your obedience and your faithfulness to God, but you're not done there. There's another aspect of it. You have got the 90% in your hands now. And what God says is, all right, now that you have tithed, Bring an offering to me. Now, notice he does not tell you how much the offering should be. You decide that. 
So what the offering does, it tells of your generosity. The tithe documents obedience, but the offering document your generosity to the cause of God. Out of this 90% that you have gotten in your hands now, how much of it are you going to give to God? It's on you. No church can decide that. No preacher can decide that. They could stand up there and say there are 10 people with $1,000 and yeah, 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 the Lord will bless them. That's them. That's not what the book says. So you stick with the book. The, the tithe, you don't decide. You do that. And you do it every time. Now, what I've noticed since the pandemic is that God's people have a now and then tithing attitude, now and then giving attitude. If they come to church, they tithe. If they don't come, come to church for that week, they don't tithe. You cannot be that unfaithful and expect major, you know, massive blessings are coming, Rev. We are in the season of the open heaven. I know all of that. But you have to qualify yourself, and it is your obedience that qualifies you. You have got to stop being ad hoc and willy-nilly with your tithe. Stop it. Oh, Rev, you know, if I, if I knew that was what you were talking about, I wouldn't have come on to word is working. <laughs> <laughs> My brother and sister, I'm telling you, when you get this right, your life will take off and mine will take off too. Well, it's taken off already. All of our lives will take off. Because obedience puts you in the place of blessing. So the tithe documents your obedience, and it should be done. As long as you get a paycheck, you should tithe. What does that mean? If you get paid weekly, you should tithe weekly. If you get paid fortnightly, tithe fortnightly. If you get paid monthly, you should tithe monthly. You don't sit in your ivory tower and decide, I'm in the mood to tithe. No, it has nothing to do with mood. And then after that is done, after the tithe has been paid, then an offering is given to the cause of God. You don't give your tithe. You pay your tithe. You bring your tithe because God demands it. All right. So now those two things are, have been done. You must do the two. Must. There is no, I give decent offerings, but I don't believe in tithing. It's not going to work. I give my tithes every week, but I don't give the offering part because I already tithe. It wouldn't work. You've got to combine it. Then when that is done, here's my third part. The third aspect of it. Are you still there? Yes. There has got to be the management aspect. What did I say? There has got to be the management aspect. What does that mean? That means that now that you have tithed and have given your offering, Whatever percentage is left from the 90, you've got to learn to not be a spendthrift. Hmm. Management, when, remember when I talked about management back then, I said that management is the primary goal of man. That's why God created man. That if you mismanage, you'll be fired. That God measures how he trusts you by how you manage what he gives you. That God will only give you what you manage well. Mm -hmm. That management attracts resources. The 10 talent got 10 talent. The five talent got five talent. The men that manage well, they got more. That management attracts resources. Yes. That God will give you only what you're able to manage. So you've got to show God that you can manage the 90 or 80 plus or 70 plus that is left. And then I said, don't pray for what you cannot manage. Don't ask God for a million dollars because you have not shown good stewardship in the 100,000 that he gave you last month. Hmm. And I said, with regard to time, you can't even manage being early on any event and you want God to bless you. You can't manage okay. your weight. How are you gonna manage what God gives to you? God checks management before he releases resources that I was preaching and it got to me like what God checks management before he releases resources. And uh, he hears, he hears your prayer, but management is what qualifies you. Even when you're praying all of your beautiful prayers, he hears your prayer, but prayer does not qualify you. Management qualifies you. 
to get and determines if your prayers are answered. What? Management determines if your prayers are answered. What? Let me say it softly then. It is management of the resources that God allows in your hand that determines if your prayers are answered. Your job is to show your management to God so that he can promote you. If you can handle other people's stuff, if you can manage other people's stuff, then God will give you your own. God will give you your own. You are here to fulfill one of God's desires. Man is here to fulfill one of God's desires. And one of God's desires is for us to manage what we have and to manage it well. Your generation is in need of your genius. You are a solution to the world if you can manage the resources that God places in your hand. You are God's response to a problem. And so you need to get off your seat because if you can't manage other people's stuff, you will never be qualified to manage your own stuff. If you can manage this, then you can manage that. Managing little qualifies you for more. Anybody who manages gets more, gets more. And who manages? The scripture tells us the wicked manage. Why? The wealth of the, is laid up for the, the wealth of the wicked That's is right. laid up for the righteous. How did the wicked get the wealth? By their ability to manage. And so Ooh, God wants the righteous to have it. But it is the wicked that manage it. And so God will protect wealth from the believer. Say what? God will protect wealth from the hands of the believer until the believer learns to manage. Hmm. Mm. God have mercy on us right there. I'm, I'm pausing to give you time to let mm. that soak in. So you, the tithe is imperative. The offering is necessary. Management is key. Management of the resources that are left is key. And then here's the other, here's the other linchpin. This ties it all together. Busy hands. What? Busy hands. I posted something on my page yesterday from Elon Musk. I'm not an Elon Musk fan, but when a brother succeeds in areas in life, you've got to pay attention to what he has to say because he has something to say. And he said these words. The poor are poor because they spend most of their money. They are poor because they spend most of their money. Listen to the language carefully. The middle class are middle class because they save most of their money. The wealthy are wealthy because they invest most of their money. Poor, spend. Middle class, save. Wealthy, invest. You hear the language? Poor people think money is for spending. Middle class people think money is for saving. Wealthy people know money is for investing. Mm. So if you and I are going to shift from middle class, because none of us are poor, um, um, Come on if we are going to shift from where we are now as middle class people into the arena of the wealthy, we have got to learn to invest what we have and make it grow, busy hands. The point is, what are you producing? What are you producing? What are you producing? What are you bringing into the world? What are you manifesting? What are you involved in? Outside of your regular nine to five, eight to four job, what else are you doing to acquire some wealth up in here? I've got a policy now that I call, my money must be pregnant money. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at what is what is this guy, bro? Where you come up with this silliness from? My money must give birth before it leaves my hand. It must get pregnant and give birth to other money. So I'm looking for things that, because of the environment and because of the COVID, and because people are cash strapped, people are selling items way below what they are valued. Sometimes I'm so embarrassed, I give them five bucks more or 10 bucks more because I know my conscience wouldn't allow me to 
just take it because mm -hmm. the price is that low. I, I, you know, anyway, that's just me. But because of the economy now, people are selling stuff that is of great value for cheap. I used to pray, may the price be low when I'm buying and high when I'm selling. That prayer is being answered right now. My hands are busy in other stuff so that I can get the money to become pregnant and produce some children before it is spent. Back in the day, money spent. That was my thing. Money spent. Not anymore. I hold it as long as I can. I discipline myself to keep it in my hands and under my control for weeks without it going anywhere. And then when it does go, it has to go into something that will make a profit. It must double or, or triple or something, but it's got to produce children. Let me say this to you and say it, Sean. Your money has got to become pregnant before it leaves your hand. Mm -hmm. Stop with this, just getting it to spend it. Let it do something before it goes away from you. Every other group <coughs> mm -hmm. keep their money for weeks and months before it leaves their community. Not us, and that has got to change. Are you feeling a brother now? Glory to God. And then oh. my final advice on this with, 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 with regard to your harvest is watch for people with the spirit of poverty. A lot of us, we get stuck in our financial lives because of the people that are in our life. We don't <laughs> vet the people that are in our life. We allow everybody access Everybody come right in. Everybody is near to us. Everybody is dear to us. But I'm telling you, some of the people that are in our lives have the spirit of poverty on them and they latch on like a leech and they will not let go. And every time a blessing comes to you, they seem to have a sixth sense that you're blessed and they move in for the kill to soak away and suck away that which God is blessing you with. You've got to watch. And what you can do is one of two things. You can give them the biblical context in which they can break away from that spirit of poverty, teach them what the scripture says about the spirit of poverty and that God wants them blessed as kings of the kingdom, or you're going to have to let some people go. Hello, Pharaoh, way down in Egypt's land. Hello, Pharaoh, let my people go. Some people have got to be let go because as long as they're in your life, your season of getting up will be stymied. You'll be stuck. You'll be held back because you have this thing on your right hand that's draining you and pulling you back to that old lifestyle. You've got to get rid of it. So tithe, so give offering, so manage, so invest. Don't let the money leave your hand until you have doubled it, tripled it, quadrupled it. And get rid of agents of poverty that are on your life, clinging to you, seeing you as their Jehovah Jireh. Let's move on from there. So you're getting rid of the blockage, of the blockage. Now the path is clear. Now you must say to yourself, increase comet. Now the limits are off. You're no longer running when they say 75% off. And you're no longer running to the dollar store for everything that you've got because you have no more blockage. Your flow comment. I want you to say that with me. My flow comment. My, my flow. flow what flow? My financial flow. My elevation. It comes. I'm going to be in the season of my rising. I'm going to rise as of now. As of when? As of today. Hmm. Now hear and hear me strong. Your yeah. father God is a sower. And if you're made in the image and likeness of God, You've got to come to that place where you are a sower too. Jesus is the seed that God sowed. And Jesus himself is a sower. God wanted more sons. He sowed his son, his only begotten son. And what does the scripture teach us? Now are we the sons, plural, of God. So God had one son. He wanted more sons. He sowed his son. And now are we the sons of God. So God got his harvest. Yes, he got his harvest, and his harvest is still coming in. Jesus is also a sower. What did he sow? He sowed his life. Why? That we might have life and have it more abundantly. Do we have life and have it more abundantly? Yes, we do. We are the harvest that Jesus got for the life yeah. that he sowed in the ground. 
when he died on the cross of Calvary. Can somebody give a brother a good amen? Amen. Oh, yes. And so this is the mystery of our kingdom, the seed kingdom. Seed, soil, 30, 60, and 100 fold. And herein is where we have to get some seed training and some soil training. Now, hear me good. Not oil, soil produce what you want it to produce. There is 30-fold soil, there is 60-fold soil, and there is 100-fold soil. For some strange reason, there are ministries that you will bless, and the blessing that comes back to you is minuscule. It's minimum. It's just a little bit above what you sow. And so what you do is you get vexed and you sow again to show the devil that you're going to get your harvest. And then it, the return comes back 30-fold again. Why? The soil is 30-fold soil. And no matter how much you sow in 30-fold soil, you will only get a 30-fold return. So as you okay. sow, you've got to qualify the soil. Figure out in X amount of time, I sowed into this ministry over here, and it took me one year to get back what I sowed, and then the second year, I got back uh, a 30-fold return. So in that particular ministry, it takes a year for your returns to start coming in. You sow in another place, in another house, in another ministry, to another life. And two months later, spectacular things begin to happen, and you trace it to the day you sowed into that person's life. So what you do now, you sow again to see if this is really so. You get back a 70-fold return in a short space of time. What do you know by, by doing it the two times? You have found 70-fold soil that produces within two weeks. But you're looking for 100-fold. And you're testing soil along the way. Learn to test the soil that you're going to sow into, that you're going to give into. There's a piece of ground in our yard here in Canada, uh, the thick leaf kalalu. The, the kalalu just seemed to have a light, like it's kalalu on steroids. Mm -hmm. It seemed like overnight it grows three, four inches, and the leaves are big, and the leaves are green, and the iron content in this thing is above the charts. Now I know my Kalalu. So for it to produce that much in that shorter space of time, guess what? We are going to plant in that piece of soil this year again. Of course, you could be you'll be crazy to leave that thing and to plant something else. Because remember, the winter killed off the grass and everything else. So that grass dies, it goes into the soil as, as fertilizer. So that uh, soil is enriched again. And you mm -hmm. just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. My point is. Learn to test soil. Not everybody who cries to you and wants something from you should receive something from you or should receive the amount that they want from you. Somebody wants $1,000, you don't have $1,000, lend them five. Never give people exactly what they want because they will see you as gyra and they will come back to you again, <laughs> again, and again. And that's one of the sure signs of a spirit of poverty. When somebody is borrowing all the time, they have a spirit of poverty on them. One sure way of knowing who has the spirit of poverty is to check the amount of times that individual is borrowing consistently from everybody that comes anywhere within three feet of them. They want something to borrow. They want to borrow this. They want to borrow. They want to borrow. Borrowing is a sign of poverty. Consistent borrowing is a sign of poverty. Borrowing and not repaying is a sign of poverty and dishonesty. I'm telling you how to qualify soil. Don't have people around you who always want to borrow. All right. When we first met many moons ago, you borrowed. All right. I accommodated your borrowing. But it's every month you want to borrow something. No, you haven't grown. You haven't learned. Stop accommodating people's weakness because. It will become a snare and a trap to you, and you will not be able to come out of poverty because you have attached yourself to a spirit of poverty. 
Learn this lesson from me. Learn this lesson here. Whoever sows into your life has a right to the harvest that comes into your life. Listen carefully. Whoever sows into your life has a right to the harvest that comes into your life. And there are poverty stricken people who have seen you as a blessed child of God and they want some of that blessing. So what do they do? They sow into your life. But here's the clincher, here's the kicker. From the time they sowed into your life, you have watched that blessings that were supposed to come to you have been diverted for some strange reason. And when you check it, it goes back to the day that person sows into your life. Hear me strong, I'm telling you this from bitter experiences. People know the principle that Whoever you sow into, you're entitled to the harvest that's flowing towards that person. So they sow into your life because they see you as a blessed child of God. But they are not really sowing to bless you. They are sowing to withdraw from you. And you would notice that from the day that person sowed into your life, into your ministry, blessings that normally would have come to you before you met them are suddenly being diverted. They don't come to you anymore. And when you track that person down, their life is on the upward swing because they are entitled to what you are entitled to. The seed is a connector. The seed is a connector. And when people connect to you, they connect to everything that's coming to you. And they can literally divert some of yours to themselves. As Jesus said, who touched me? He said, Lord, look at the crowd around here. He said, no, somebody knows how to touch and pull power out of me. There's a rascal in this audience here that pull. I felt virtue leave me. There are people that can make virtue leave you. They can make power leave you. They can make blessings leave you. They can make harvest get sidetracked into their, into their house, into their yard, into their hands, into their purse. And so those of us who are in that place where people want to sow, we have got to watch ourselves too because not every sower is planting. Some sowers are merely connecting for the harvest. And you can have a lot of diversion happen to you because the wrong seed has been planted in your soil and it's pulling like nobody's business. Oh, I'm giving you some secrets now. I'm giving you some secrets now. Glory to God. John 10 and 10, Jesus said, you'll have life and have it more abundantly. The seed is the master key to all kingdom business. You've got to learn seed direction. The spirit of God will lead and guide you. Seed direction. Where am I going to direct this seed? Who is the person that God wants to bless? Who is God using me to bless right now? Who? 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 Seed direction. Lean heavily on the spirit's guidance to lead you into what soil to give into. Because if there's no seed direction, there will be seed deception. Which means you give to the wrong soil and you do not get a harvest. I did that one time and uh, I, I, I tasted poverty in, in ways that I'd never tasted it before because I sowed into the wrong soil. Even when the Holy Spirit told me that man is a seed eater. The man flattered me in front of hundreds of people and he told me I got money in my pocket that I will bless his ministry with. And me now trying to look good in the eyes of the hundreds of people, I took the money out, put it in an envelope, marched forward to the roars of approval from the crowd. Everybody was clapping and patting me on the back and telling me what, how generous I was. And that, but the Holy Spirit told me, do not give to that man. He's a seed eater. But I was so flattered that he told me how nice I dressed, told me how good I looked, told me he knew I had money in my pocket, and I did. And he told me that money was for his ministry. And while he's saying that, the Holy Spirit said, lie. Lie, 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 lie. 
but I did not listen to the Holy Spirit because of the clap from the audience and the flattering words from the man. And from the day I gave that man that money, my life took a downward spiral. I had been broke before, but this was the, the brokest broke I'd ever been broke. I'd never been broke like that ever again. That was broke and it lasted for months until it dawned on me that from the time I gave to that man, everything went south and I had tested, tested soil before and there was another preacher that I knew who was good ground to me. And I mustered up some money a lady had sent to buy some CDs and DVDs for me. And I sent the money to him. And from the day he got it, my life took a, a turn for the better. You've got to be aware of seed direction or you'll get to learn seed deception and you'll go down because you sowed into the wrong side. Now here is what lots of Christians like to do. Now, I know it sounds like I'm all over the place, but I'm not. I'm getting to a point here. Here is what a lot of Christians like to do. They like to replace the seed with confession, with prayer and fasting, with decree and declare. Instead of sowing, they pray these fanciful prayers. They make these decrees and that I decree and I declare that as of now, the heavens above my head are opened up and the ground under me shall no longer be iron, but it shall produce and reproduce to the glory of God. I decree and I declare that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath for the greater one lives in me. For the scripture said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I decree and I declare. And they find all the scriptures on positive declarations. And they make decrees and declarations, but they don't sow. Without the seed in the ground, all decrees and declarations are obsolete and lacking in power. Don't replace the seed with confession. Reverend, uh, Reverend Gaspar, you know, I'm blessed by your program in the morning. The word is working for me. I've gotten so much, so many principles from you. I learned so much. In fact, I learned more on your program than I learned in, for years in church. And the Lord spoke to me to bless your ministry. And one of these days, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let me leave that alone for a while. There is such a thing, my brothers and sisters, as seed suicide what seed suicide now the seed is good but you committed suicide with the seed you let the seed commit suicide how is that you saw everywhere and anywhere you saw as soon as the preacher starts crying and talk about the churn in africa that he's minding and talk about the building that he's putting up and and talk about the needs of the ministry and talk about uh, the sick that he's ministering to Listen to me carefully. Do not sow everywhere because some places don't deserve your time nor your financial blessing. Some houses don't deserve your time nor your financial blessing. Some preachers don't deserve your time nor your financial blessing. Satan will always hinder those who violate the tithe, the offering, the seed, and the principle of management and the principle of busy hands and the principle of getting out poverty from anywhere around you. You're going to have to listen to that again. Seed suicide is being committed on a daily and a regular basis by Bible-believing people. Oh, I can tell you stories, just very recent stories of people who put millions into a ministry only to find that all the minister was doing was building bigger barns for themselves and it had nothing to do with God's work and God's kingdom. All of that seed has gone to waste in what I call seed suicide. Oh yes, without seed understanding, without the understanding of seed, what did I say? Without seed understanding, you and your life will be tied up in a system of failure. Without seed understanding, your life will be tied up in a system of failure you will be integrated in failure. Why are you failing and you're a good tither? Why are you failing and you go to church on a regular basis? Why are you failing and you're listening to the word on a regular basis? Because of seed suicide. 
because of the lack of understanding of seed, because you don't test soil, because you give scattering it every which way, but loose, because you're a lousy manager and a spendthrift on top of that, because your hands are not busy doing anything, because you allow the spirit of poverty, you allow people with the spirit of poverty to, to infest your life. They are worse than COVID. The infection of poverty is worse than COVID. Everybody gets infected. It's a contagious spirit that has infected a lot. Now, what Satan does, he knows he can't stop you from tithing. Nobody will stop me from tithing. Nobody. They could talk, as my mother would say, they could talk cheese. Nobody on the planet can stop me from tithing. Nobody. Not relatives, not friends, not preachers, not Creflo Dollar and his mind change on tithing and not Benny Hinn and he's not going to be in that thing again. I don't care who the preacher is. They can change their minds all they want to. But as for me and my house, we settle this matter. We have settled this matter. Satan will send a, a, a person with the spirit of poverty into your life. They will come with tears. They will come. They look sincere. They always look sincere. And they will cry to you that you're the only one that they have that they can, they can talk to. You're the only one that, that ever listened to them. They always come with this. You're the only one. And you feel, you know, sympathetic because it is our nature as believers to be kind to people. You can't be a preacher and hate people. You, mm. it just, and they know that. They know that. They know the kindness in your heart. They see it. Your face has a softer look. No matter how ugly you are, kindness cannot be hidden. It, it shows. It's a beautifying right. something on the, on the facial features and expression of people. No matter how, you don't have to be in, in a Vogue magazine, but if you're kind, your eyes, your face, the, the, the law of kindness follows you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So does the spirit of poverty. And it will cling on to you and begin to divert from you and you will get frustrated in your financial life because you know you should be doing better than this, but you are not because somebody has planted their tentacles on you and they are drawing from you and withdrawing from you. Without seed understanding, you've got to understand the law of seed and how it works or you'll be tied up in a system of failure even when you're a tither. Without seed understanding, you'll be tied up in a system of failure. Now listen, the economy does not determine the power of the seed, nor how the thing come back to you, comes back to you, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. The economy does not determine that. Don't look to the economy to decide whether or not you're going to obey God. Look to God to decide when you're going to obey God, because the economy is in the hands of God. No lion eats grass. No matter how bad the economy is, the lion eats meat. You're a lion. You will not go down with any economy. You will go up because you are tapped into a different source. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Philippians 4 and 13, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This is a seed verse. Supernatural supply comes through the seed. My God shall supply. He was talking to a church that was giving to his ministry. And uh, he was talking about seed. It's a, it's a verse with regard to seed. That's why I'm saying mm -hmm. without seed understanding, you'll be tied up in a system of failure. Because people look at that scripture and they think something else. But it is talking about seed. Supernatural supply comes through the seed. Philippians 4, 13 to 19. Now here is my, here is my clincher, clincher. You can't worship past an instruction. When God gives you an instruction, you can't disobey the instruction, but lift your hands and begin to worship and praise and dance and hoop and holler. You can't cut tongues and withhold from doing what the instruction says and you're speaking in tongues and think that you can worship past an instruction. A lot of God's children are using worship as a means of escaping obedience. But my brother, to obey is better than the sacrifice of worship that you bring. All them sacrifice of praise that you bring, God doesn't want it. 
He wants obedience. He prefers obedience. And he says so. A, 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 A. Now here's what you must learn. I'm talking about seed still. You must sow to obey. You are sowing to obey God, not to get. Some people only sow because they want to have it. Their giving is about the getting. They know God will keep his word. So they're giving to get. No, don't sow to get. Sow to obey. Sow because you're, you're dealing with a loving father who wants your success. So you're sowing to obey God, not to get back a harvest. But you will get back a harvest. But don't let that be your primary reason. There's a little bit of greed involved there when all you're doing is sowing to get. Are you feeling a brother? God wants you debt free. God wants you walking in abundance. God wants your, your, your bills paid off. You've got to be seed secure. God gives instructions so he can multiply what you give to his cause. You've got to know to sow. You've got to locate quality soil. Are you feeling a brother? Your seed can make you transition because seed releases possibility. Your seed can make you transition or shift because your seed releases possibility. Glory to God. What I'm trying to put an end to is the constant, consistent, chronic behavior of the believer who obey God eventually. They will obey, but not right now. And whatever God has told them to do, they put it off for when they, when they feel like doing it. I'm in the mood now. I'm going to bless this ministry. I'm going to bless this house. I'm going to, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Delayed obedience is rebellion. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Now, here's what you need to know. When God talks to you about seed, like he's talking to you about seed now through my voice, I have six other messages to minister today. And none of them, the Lord went, you know, I, I, it's like a wrestling contest. I said, God, give a brother a break. There are other people more anointed than me to, to release this message on seed. He said, I want you to do it and I want you to do it today. Why? I know why. And here's why. When God talks to you about seed, when God talks to you about seed, God has a harvest for you on his mind. But only the seed can release the harvest. When God talks to you about seed, when God talks to me about seed, one time the Lord told me, I want you to give that person over there a $1,000. <laughs> I said, Satan, <laughs> I rebuke you, the blood of Jesus on you. You spirit of poverty that's trying to bring me down. The Lord said, son, it's me. It's me. I got worried. I nearly went into depression. And then it dawned on me. Hold a minute. If God tells me to give that person $1,000 and I don't have it, God will find a way to get it to me. And then I smiled, then I laughed, then I repented, then I said, Lord, I'm sorry I called you the devil. Yeah, 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 yeah. The day wasn't true. The day wasn't true. And somebody came and said, you know, Rev, I have been behind in this and behind in that. And uh, the Lord has been talking to me about blessing you for the longest while. And I have not fully obeyed the Lord. I said, you have not halfly obeyed the Lord. You haven't obeyed the Lord at all. I never got anything from you, ever. All I got is nice word, nice sermon, pat on the back. Never. He said, well, today I'm going to end that. More than a thousand they gave. Now, immediately I knew where it was supposed to go to. That is why you've got to familiarize yourself with the subject of seed, because sometimes what you consider a harvest is seed to sow. I called a person. I said, can you meet me this and that place? I said, you will, you will smile when we meet. They said, all right. I'm in the mood for a smile. And when I handed the thing to them, I had the amount written on the outside. And they burst into tears. They said, I'm going to call you later. And they shut out like a bat out of hell. 
There was an outstanding bill that was giving them no ends of hell and they were getting embarrassing letters. And that day was the deadline to pay that bill. They needed that thousand dollars that day. And then they called later on and said, Rev, if you only know, I said, yes, I know. You, you really desperately needed it. And the Lord needed somebody that he could trust to pass it through their hands. The Lord has instructed many of you watching me, watching us, watching this Word is Working program. The Lord has instructed you to send a blessing to Reverend Gaspar, Apostle Gaspar. The Lord has told you that many times. And a few of you have obeyed, but it's very few. It's a very limited number. On one hand, you can count how many. I didn't ask her anything. She didn't tell me anything. But I'm an old shark in in, in the sea, and I smell the blood of an Englishman. You have not fully obeyed the Lord. Today, today, obedience is necessary for God to kick start that blessing that he is coming from you, coming to you. When God talks to you about seed like he's talking to you today, he has a harvest for you on his mind. Sow that seed, sow it quickly, sow it in obedience, sow it today, sow it this week. Don't talk about next week, next month, and next year. Do what the Lord has told you to do, and let God arise and the enemy be scattered. Lift up your right hand right now. In the name of Jesus, you give seed to the sower. In other words, you give seed to them that you know will sow it in obedience to what you said, like you told me to give to that person. And I was wondering and worried about where it's going to come from. But you gave seed to the sower. You knew I would sow it and give it back to that person. You sent it. And in a similar fashion, you are speaking to people. You have spoken to people. And some, very few a very small, minuscule, limited number have obeyed you. The vast majority have put it off, put it off. And right now they're blushing, they're smiling. They have their hand, heads bent and they're scratching their jaw and scratching their lip and scratching their chin because of the guilt. But you have not given us condemnation. But you come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. I pray that seed will come into the hands of the sower and that the seed would be sown into the word is working for me ministry to the glory of God. I command now that the harvest shall come, good measure, pressed down, shaking and running over, 30, 60, and 100 fold. We prefer 100 fold, but we take in every fold that we can get, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Let the heavens above their heads open up. I break the power of poverty. I rebuke the spirit of poverty. I curse the lack, the, the need, and the insufficiency that's prevailing. And I command, I command that the harvest that has been delayed would come in. In the name of Jesus, I command the harvest to come in. I loose the harvest. I loose the harvest. I loose the harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that ideas, money-making ideas, witty ideas will come into the minds of the people. And this time around, they will not just say good idea. They will manifest the idea. They will make it happen. They will get their hands busy. And they will watch the management skills that they have. They will manage that which is theirs. They would stop just doling it out to, to undeserving soil. Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that they will not give to soil that does not deserve the seed, but they will give to a ministry that's feeding them. And that which has been feeding them, they will now begin to feed in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, glory to God. Amen. Back over mm -hmm. to Apostle Von der Gaspar. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity. Wow. Good. Good morning, everyone. I have to say good morning, everyone, again, because this message was a powerful and is a powerful, powerful message uh, to the body of Christ. Uh, the thing that supports the kingdom of God here on earth is what you give. What you give to the work of God, what you give to the people of God, that is what supports the work of God. And what causes us, Apostle, to get wealth is what we manage after we have given. Yep. And these are the two things that both you, myself, and a few of other people have been hammering away for a long time. And when you get these two together and you put the equation together, management, investment, uh, putting your hands to work, obeying God in the areas that he has spoken to, to us about to give unto his word, give to his people. 
our obedience and our management goes together. And this morning, I know, you know, the thing about uh, these messages is that they cut deep. They go straight to the heart. And so very often, people of God walk away without obeying and without uh, making the necessary changes in their lives that they need to make. You have heard the word of God this morning. The man of God brought the word of God to you. He took the time to study and to bring the word of God to you and without fear. Because many people will go back, go back and say, oh, you know what? Uh, I don't like this message on tithing. You know, uh, I, I'm so tired of hearing about tithing. And we all have to face that, that, that music when, when the message of tithing and giving comes. But nevertheless, we are here to obey God. And we are here to stand with God and do whatever it is that he says to us. And he has obeyed God today. So it's your time to obey God in your actions. Amen? <laughs> the Amen. word is working for you. And you know, this is something that I don't do. But the truth is that many apostles have come on this broadcast. And they have been receiving for years. And that's a, as much as it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything. That's as far as it goes. And I think it will take. Absolutely. No givers will give. Absolutely. And so God is bringing us into a place. The word of word is working to me broadcast. It's, it's moving like a chameleon, changing as time daily 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 and iran is in the back room and she knows what is coming uh soon and by the end of this year so many things would have changed and pastor welcome said something he said you might be receiving all of this stuff free right now but then before you know it something is going to change it's not that you're going to have to pay for anything but it's just that god will take us into a place where what we're doing now has become more of uh, an investment uh, rather than us just sitting here pouring out to people who necessarily would not even pay us a penny or, or, or reward us for anything that we do. And so God says that the gift will take you, your gift will never take you before mean men. And so the word is working for me. My point is the word is working for me broadcast. Will be aired before people who will invest and give and support. And so if you're one of those people, start today. If you're one of those people, begin today. Thank you, uh, Apostle, for, for bringing that message today. Uh, God bless you. And thanks to all of you who are watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have Pastor Welcome with us. And I know that it's going to be a really great time in the presence of the Lord. Thank you again. And God bless you. Everybody. Take care.